Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. My very first video on YouTube was a tools video where I went through the tools that I work with. And it's always interesting for me to look at that video and just see how far things have come. So for this video, I'm explaining which tools I use, starting with a pencil. In this video, I wanna talk about the tools that I've been using in 2020. So in this video, I wanna go over some of the tools that I, that I use. My tools have changed so much over the years, so in this video, I'm gonna just do a recap of the tools that I'm using at the moment and the tools that I've kind of let go of over the last couple of years. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, but I'll tell you more about them later. Let's start off with the first tool I've been using this year has been an air compressor. So I went from my little baby air compressor to a much bigger one, which has a lot more pressure and is just a lot more fun to use as well. So this has been super useful for cleaning my joints, making sure that the areas that I need to be white and crisp can stay that way, while also using it from time to time to create really soft tones as well in areas that I've gone over with graphite already. The next tool that I've been absolutely loving will be my grinders. So I've got two of these now. I thrifted them from secondhand stores in Cork Bay. We went there and just were looking for interesting things to try and grind down graphite. And eventually after some experimenting with a whole bunch of different old antique things, I found that if I modify this grinder with the help of my friend Rupert who created this really cool thing to fit over the grinder, we could put sandpaper discs on them and now I'm using it to sharpen my pencils and grind blending stumps down and then also grind my graphite powder which used to take an absolute age and now it's going a lot quicker. So, so these grinders have changed things in quite a massive way. They really are making life a lot easier. But I still use pencil sharpeners. Primarily these on disc sharpeners, they're pretty great, pretty simple and um, yeah. So it's mostly about how quickly I can sharpen my pencil. And I guess we should maybe talk about makeup sponges. Makeup sponges actually changed my life. So makeup brushes are really, really great. I'm busy experimenting with which are the best, but makeup brushes specialize in moving powder around, so they are just really useful tools. It's annoying. I've been seeing artists use these tools for years and years and years, and I've always just gone out and I've grabbed a normal paintbrush and I've tried to use that, and I was like, this isn't that effective. I might as well just use cotton wool, like I usually do, and now I see the light, and they are incredibly useful. I'm using them all the time. It's frustrating, but, but I'm very glad to have discovered these tools again and to be using them properly. So the full range of pencils that I'm working with are from a 2H, then a B, then 2B, and then an 8B. And very seldom I'm using a 14B as well, which is a super dark pencil out of Falkestal's matte black non-reflective pencil range. For the 2H, the B, and the 2B, I'm usually using a mechanical pencil. So this just makes it a bit easier so I don't have to sharpen my pencil continuously. And these also come in different size graphite refills. So from 0.35mm, which is the smallest, to 0.5mm, and this one is a 0.7mm, so it's quite a, quite a large one. Then for the 8B, I still just use a normal standard pencil, but I also grind down 8B Faber-Castell graphite sticks, and that's just for doing larger areas, or if I'm dipping a blending stamp or a brush. The next obvious tool is the paper that I'm using, and I'm still using Archer's 300 gram hard press paper. This paper has still just been the best paper for my style of drawing, and I've really enjoyed using it over the years. I've had no real reason to change, and I haven't really found anything that suits me better than the, the Archer's 300 gram. So for wetting my paper and stretching it out, I'm using acid-free sponges. Sometimes you can find sponges from a hardware store, but be really careful because if it's an abrasive sponge, it'll damage the surface of your paper and change the way that you work with it. So you've got to try and find really soft sponges that you can apply water on and rub it really gently. I'm pretty open to experimenting in this space though with use spray bottles or anything to try and wet the paper, but I'm still using sponges. Then gum tape for attaching to the paper and letting it stretch and pull really tight. This is the only tape that I've found that can stick to the paper with enough force to allow it to actually pull tight on the MDF boards, which is the other thing. I've been using MDF boards as the base for my drawings. This is really useful so you can just pick up a drawing, move it around, rest it against the wall if you need to, or rest it against the easel, put it back on the table. It's great. We've still got cotton wool as one of the old favorites. Cotton wool is just 
creates super versatile. You can change the size of it and yeah, break it up into these little nubs and get really dark tones with them in conjunction with the graphite powder. Another thing that I'm still loving is this stencil cutout that I made out of some other plastic. I forget the name of the plastic, but it's kind of a rigid plastic, which helps it just keep its shape, but it's really, really thin as well, which is really important. And I created this shape, which is just basically an S curve like that with a little hole in it. And this shape seems to allow me to basically stencil out anything. So if you're a Patreon member, you can find that stencil cut out on Patreon. Um, I think we posted it like a year ago, but I'll see, maybe we can update it and post a new one. Then moving to erasers, I have very much settled into the mechanical eraser space. So this would just help me, especially with the way that my drawing has developed rather than leaving out the highlights very, very carefully. I don't mind going over areas with graphite getting smooth tones and then putting my highlights back out. But key to that has been my mechanical eraser. So this is a motorized eraser, spins really fast and I can pull out graphite really, really well. It does damage the paper though, so you can't use it a lot. You kind of have one or two shots at getting your highlight before your paper starts getting damaged. So you gotta use it carefully, but it's a really, really great tool. Then the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser, still fantastic. This is great for little hairs and things. What I've started using are these fiber crystal um, like pencil erasers. So this is something that I could just sharpen on my grinder and get quite a nice sharp point. The only problem with this is the sharper that the point is, the softer it is. So then you struggle to get those really fine lines. But if you find that kind of middle section of where it's still strong enough, it's like blunt enough to have rigidity, then you can get some really fine lines. So these have been pretty cool with some more nuanced kind of erasing. Somewhere just past the Tombow Mono Zero for like fine details. Yeah, these are really cool. And then finally, my favorite and faithful kneadable eraser. So these are just wonderful in creating just amazing textures. I used this really successfully on the rocks to create these textures, which I otherwise would never have thought of. I was just kind of molding the kneadable eraser into a shape and letting it roll over the graphite and was pulling out these beautiful shapes. So yeah, kneadable erasers are an absolute must. Oh, I almost forgot to mention blending stumps. So blending stumps are still fantastic. They were almost replaced by the brushes, but there's still quite a lot of textures that the blending stumps can help me get that the brushes kind of struggle to get to that point. The thing that's also revitalized the blending stumps for me is the use of the grinder. So now I'll sharpen or refresh a blending stump with the grinder and I can start to actually change the shape of the tip of the blending stump with the grinder, which allows me a little bit more control. So it's cool to get experimental with these kinds of things to like sharpen it all the way one side and just see what that does for your textures. So I've really enjoyed using blending stumps in this new way as well. Tissue paper is another unexpected hero of the drawing. Um, this is essential. I always have a piece of tissue paper underneath my hand so that I don't smudge my drawing and this goes a huge way in keeping my drawings clean. It's also really important if I've ground down a lot of graphite to put a large piece of tissue paper over my drawing because that graphite goes into the air and then slowly settles down and that can really make your drawings look dull if you don't take care of that space. Some other tools that have been really useful have been the lights that I've been using. So that light back there, that light is a Godox LC30. So a really small, cute little light, I've got a little diffuser on it as well, which helps a lot. But having good quality light is an absolute luxury, but it makes a huge difference for your drawings as well. Just making sure that your work is well lit. It's the worst thing, and I've done this before, is to spend weeks on a drawing and what I thought was okay lighting um, and move it into a gallery space where they have very good lighting and then I just see all these imperfections pop out on the drawing, which I literally couldn't see before and that, that was heartbreaking. So since I had that experience, I've just lit my drawings the best way that I can to make sure that I can absolutely see any imperfections before someone hangs it in their house. Yeah, light's crazy. The tools that we've said goodbye to over the last year will be the solvents and the linseed oil. So I haven't used solvents or linseed oil in about a year now. Um, there was a stage where I was using them a lot. They were giving me some really beautiful, creamy, dark, dark tones, but the trade-off was a little bit too much for me. It was always such a departure from the texture of the graphite. It was really hard to blend the two. Um, I'd always get really stressed when I was trying to blend the two materials together. 
I might go back and visit it at some point because it gave me smooth tones which are just like unmatched but I've gotten really close to those tones with the techniques that I'm using with large pieces of cotton wool and a large brush to try and get a really smooth graphite tone so we'll see but for now I've said goodbye to those two tools and then for the final tool which I also get asked quite a lot about is my fixative so I use Crumbusher fixatives and I've been using this one for quite a long time now and it's great it doesn't change the color of the pencil it doesn't blow pencil or charcoal away obviously using fixative you can't just like go right up to the artwork and spray you're gonna get marks and things with that but if you are a decent distance away and you spray layers gently you're gonna be fine Grumbusher is one of the best brands in my opinion and um, yeah they've served me super super well so those are my tools for 2024 things have changed a lot along the years but I'm, I'm really happy with my workflow at the moment um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you want a deeper dive into any of these sections. I'll either answer that in the comments or I'll make a whole new video explaining further some of the techniques that I use. Before I end this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for a couple of years now and they've played a huge role in my career. Not only in sponsoring these videos and helping me maintain this channel, but more importantly, early on in my career, I was looking for a way to showcase my work and the idea of trying to learn HTML and to build a beautiful website from scratch just seemed so daunting to me and I absolutely didn't have the time to try and focus on that and my drawing career at the same time. So I was looking for a way to build a beautiful website, make it easy for clients to find me and to get in touch with me. And I thought that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them and set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I want to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use the software code and get 10% off your first purchase. Cool, so those are the tools that I've been using for the the last couple of months and years. Leave a like if you found it useful. It really helps the channel out in a huge way. As always, thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.